Have you ever wondered about the complexities of love and relationships? Today, we'll traverse the path of such intricacies with a masterpiece from the quill of William Shakespeare, namely, Love's Labour's Lost. This play takes us to the court of the King of Navarre, a man who, along with his three companions, takes a solemn oath. They pledge to devote themselves to three years of ardent study, keeping the world at arm's length, particularly women, in pursuit of wisdom. But as the saying goes, man proposes, God disposes. Their meticulous plans encounter an unexpected twist with the arrival of the Princess of France and her ladies. The tranquility of the court is disrupted and the solemnity of the oath is challenged. The stage is set for a battle of wits, charm and the undeniable pull of attraction. So what happens when a vow of celibacy encounters the charm of women? Let's delve into the story. Imagine taking a vow to avoid women and then being visited by the most charming ladies. A tricky situation, wouldn't you agree? Now let's dive into the heart of the story. The King of Navarre and his three companions Byron, Longueville and Dumaine make a solemn pact. They swear an oath to devote themselves to three years of study and fasting, and most importantly, to avoid the company of women. The King believes that this will allow them to focus on their studies and achieve great intellectual growth. But as we all know, life has a funny way of throwing curveballs. And in this case, it comes in the form of the Princess of France and her three lovely ladies, Rosalind, Maria and Catherine. They arrive at the court of Navarre on a diplomatic mission. But there's a catch. The king, bound by his oath, cannot allow them inside the court. So they set up camp in the fields outside. The men, despite their oath, are immediately smitten by these women. The king falls for the princess. Byron is taken by Rosalind's wit. Longaville is charmed by Maria, and Dumaine is captivated by Catherine's beauty. Apparently, their oath to avoid women didn't prepare them for the actual presence of such enchanting ladies. This newfound attraction leads to a conflict with their oath. The men are torn between their intellectual pursuits and their hearts. They are caught in a tug of war between their commitment to their oath and their growing affection for the women. It's a classic Shakespearean conundrum, where the heart wants what it wants, but the mind has other plans. It's a whirlwind of emotions and promises. The men are now caught in a web of their own making. They're at a crossroads, with their hearts on one side and their oath on the other. The men are now torn between their oath and their hearts. What will they choose? This is the question that leads us into the next scene of this captivating story, so hold on to your seats as the drama unfolds in the realm of love and odes in Shakespeare's Love's Labour's Lost. Scene Script Have you ever tried to express your feelings through a letter? It's not always as easy as it seems, right? Welcome to the third scene of our journey through Love's Labour's Lost, where we delve into a whirlwind of emotions captured in the form of love letters. Each of the gentlemen, including the king himself, is caught in this maelstrom of love, and they decide to pour out their feelings onto paper. Ah, the irony. Remember their oath? The one where they swore off women to dedicate themselves to three years of study and fasting? Well, it seems love has a way of making us forget our promises. Now, let's take a closer look at these love letters. They're not just simple declarations of love, oh no. They are elaborate, verbose and filled with high-flown language. The men use every poetic device at their disposal to woo the women. They believe their letters to be profound expressions of love, but to us, the audience, they're more comical than romantic. Take Barone's letter to Rosalind, for instance. He likens her to a goddess and himself to a humble devotee, all in an attempt to win her heart. But his letter, filled with extravagant praises and metaphors, is so overly dramatic that it becomes humorous. Similarly, the king's letter to the princess is a grand affair, filled with lofty declarations of his love for her. Yet, it's the very grandiosity of his words that makes it amusing. These letters play a crucial role in the unfolding plot. They not only reveal the men's true feelings, but also serve as evidence of their broken oath. The irony is not lost on us. These learned men who had sworn off distractions are now distracted by their own hearts. These love letters filled with humor, irony, and a touch of desperation become the men's tools in their quest for love. They break their oath, risking their honor and friendship, all in the hope of winning the women's hearts. In their pursuit of love, 
the men break their oath. But will their letters win the hearts of the ladies? Only time will tell. Stay tuned as we continue our journey through this captivating play by William Shakespeare. Every story has an ending, but is it always as we expect it to be? As we delve into the resolution of Shakespeare's love's labors lost, we find that the conclusion is not quite as straightforward as we might have anticipated. In the play, the ladies receive the love letters from their respective suitors. However, instead of succumbing to the romantic gestures, they decide to play a little trick on the men. The ladies, having seen through the men's pretenses, plot to switch places and thus receive the wrong letters. The men, unaware of the trick, proceed to make fools of themselves, declaring their love to the wrong women. This humorous twist adds a layer of complexity to the story, as the men are forced to confront their shallow expressions of love. It's a moment of revelation, where the men realize their folly in making grand hollow promises of love. However, the plot takes an unexpected turn when the ladies, rather than accepting the men's apologies, ask them to wait for a year and a day to prove their love. This surprising demand leaves the men in a state of shock and the audience in suspense. The ladies' request is not just a test of the men's patience, but also a reflection of their own wisdom and maturity. They understand that love is not just about grand gestures and eloquent words, but about commitment, patience, and the willingness to wait. So, the play concludes not with a typical happy ending, but with a promise of a future resolution. The men are left to ponder their actions and to prepare for a year of proving their love. The ladies, on the other hand, are left with the hope that their suitors will fulfill their promises. Love's Labor's Lost leaves us with a lesson about the complexities of love and the consequences of hasty promises. It's a reminder that love is not a game of words, but a journey of the heart. It's a testament to Shakespeare's genius, his understanding of human nature, and his ability to weave humor and wisdom into a timeless tale of love and learning. Do like, share and subscribe our channel for more content.